Is poo taboo? Poo problems are common in many children and are most prevalent in preschool children. In most cases, a child suffering with a poo problem is actually suffering from constipation, which is when they poo less than four times a week. As parents, tackling the subject and identifying whether there is a problem with your child's pooing habits can be really difficult. But fear not, because for the next few minutes, uh, we're on a mission to dispel the myths about poo problems. Joining me today is television's Dr. Ranch, who not only is the co-creator and presenter of the CBB show, Get Well Soon, and presenter of the kids' health segment on ITV's This Morning, busy aren't you uh, he's also the only TV doctor who specializes in children young people and families he's also the face of the let's talk about poo campaign led by children's continence charity Eric and also joining us is Amy Atrell and her four-year-old son Kane who has had chronic hey, constipation since he was 18 months old so thank you so much for all of you being here excuse me you found my pen I see Hmm. I'll let you hold on to it for a little while. We are live today. I've got a feeling someone's going to prove that. <laughs> and so if you have any questions for Dr. Rand or Amy, then please use the box on your screen and we'll do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 20 minutes or so. And if you're tweeting, uh, then please use the hashtag Studio Talk TV and Let's Talk About Poo. Hashtag Let's Talk About Poo. And again, we'll try to give you a mention. So Amy, you must really sympathise with other parents who are suffering these type of problems with their children. Yes, I do. It's It can be quite stressful and tiring and exhausting, especially with children who suffer with constipation. Yeah. Um, and then it can obviously lead on to other problems that with the constipation you get the impactation where it's impacted and it doesn't, yeah. and it can hurt. So I, yeah, I can feel for the parents. Yeah, and we're going to find out um, a little bit more about this lovely young man in a moment. But Dr. Ranch, let's start with you and actually working out what the issue is. How do we know our child has a problem? How often should they be pooing? Um, well, that's a very interesting question, actually, because lots of people have tried to define constipation. It's quite tricky to do. In essence, at a very basic level, it is the infrequent passage or painful passage of poo. Okay. okay, and it's different. Normal is different for different people. So you've got some children who poo two, three, four times a day, yep. and some children who only poo two, three, four times a week, and that can be normal. That can be the normal spectrum. But what I say to parents, what's important is when they go, what's coming out, and how do they feel. Okay. That's the important thing. And if it's difficult or painful, then that's a clue that something might not be quite right, mm -hmm. but it is different for different people. And we're going to talk more about those indicators a little bit later on, but my first instinct is always diet, and probably as quite a new mum, I always think, oh, is my little girl having enough fibre? Is she having her greens, her vegetables? And probably she isn't because she's at that age where she, you know, chooses what she wants to eat. So how important is diet or how much is diet to blame? Well, diet is a big part, but it's not the only part in constipation. So at a, think about it simply, if, you, if your diet isn't that good or if you don't have fibre and fluid in there, then you are more likely to be predisposed to getting constipation. OK. OK, but that's not the whole story. There are lots of other reasons children get constipated. They might have an underlying medical problem. Mm -hmm. or behavioural problem that predisposes them to that. They may be on certain medications that might make them constipated. Um, they, um, so there's, there's lots of other things that you need to take into account. It's not just diet. And it's looking at the whole picture. Exactly. Yeah. So when we manage constipation, we look at several different factors that might be at play in that particular child and then we'll take it from there. Um, Amy, I'm sure you, you'll agree with me on this one. I think my biggest fear would be if my child had an issue like this, is sending them to be looked after by someone else because you want to be the person that's making everything okay. And we know obviously Kane's getting to school age very yeah. soon. So what sort of things can we be doing, particularly Amy and anyone else watching, to put things in place for make that transition much easier and so that the school knows? It's a big worry amongst parents when children that either already have poo-related problems yeah. or are likely to develop them when they go to school. It's a, it's a real concern. Mm. And it's important because sometimes school can be the trigger 
to developing these sorts of issues, or it can make those issues worse. So if you've got a child that's got constipation or continence-related problems, first and foremost, have a chat with the school about it. Just give them the heads up, talk mm -hmm. to their teachers. If they've got a school nurse, talk to them. Um, it's, it, and, and remember, you know, these children can get things like have accidents at school, and that can be really embarrassing for them. Mm. That may be misunderstood by other pupils or misunderstood by their teachers, which is why it's so important to talk to them about it. Um, in some cases, if it's a really big issue, it's an important thing to have something called an individual health care plan. Yeah. That's when you all sit down together with the school, the parents, a healthcare professional, and put a plan in for that specific child to manage their constipation. Remember, they may have to take medications at school. They may, the, the teachers may need to be aware that they need to go to the toilet at certain times. All those things need to be talked about. And it's a really, it's probably something that you yeah. did, wasn't it, with Kane? Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing with, because mm -hmm. Kane's just been accepted into the school that he'll be going into, which I'm going to be going up to the school and doing a health plan to make sure like, that he has to go to the toilet after his lunch. If he's mm -hmm. having something to eat, it's better to sit on the toilet after you eaten so it gives it that so that's what I'll be going, I'll be going so up to That must school. make you feel hugely relieved that you've had the opportunity to talk to them or, or having the opportunity yeah. to talk to them. That was my main concern. Like obviously a lot of parents think like there's going to be a problem at school when I think there will be but I think it's nice that you can actually talk to the school and you yeah. can set up a plan and set what you would like to have help Kane at school so then he, I know that he's not going to be worried or that he can't talk mm -hmm. to anyone, he can't ask. Kane's quite honest and open about his problems. He's he is a switched on, lively, incredibly smart little boy. <laughs> um, so, Kane, we're going to ask your mummy now to tell us a little bit about what his pooing problems are. Well, Kane started at 18 months old, where he had a stool that was very hard, um, and he screamed and cried. And obviously, I took him to the doctors. The doctors um, gave us uh, Movacol, um, and then onwards, it has been an ongoing problem where then Kane got impacted. Um, and then he I was admitted into the hospital um, where he actually didn't open his barrels for like 27 days. Gosh. Which is, it's a, I, the pain that was going through Kane was obviously hard, mm. but obviously you try and listen to obviously what the doctors are saying and what they want to do. And eventually Kane did go and they gave us medication. And it is an ongoing thing where mm. you have to, you've got to stick to the medicine. You can't just stop it. You can't think, oh, I'll give it a rest. Let him have a little bit of a break. You're better off carrying on with the medicine and telling you what the doctor's obviously saying to do. And also speaking to Eric. They, they helped yeah. and I obviously spoke to and there's other parents on there that you can talk to or you can read their stories and you think oh actually I'm going through mm -hmm. the same problem and it's nice to know that you're not the only one going through it because I felt that I was the only one going through yeah. it and no one knew anything about constipation or anything to do with the bowel. Well, I suppose it's one of those things yet again being British that we don't mm. go around no. openly no. talking no. about do no we? One do, which I'm quite open now about poo. I quite ask for, I'm yeah. quite happy to say to people look if you've got any problems just I've got the stalk yeah. chart. Absolutely. So, yeah. The stool chart, that sounds The Bristol stool chart. Um, I have to say, Kane's doing some lovely work here with the biro <laughs> and the paper. I'm <laughs> waiting to see what he's going to create <laughs> down here. Dr. Ranch, is um, any of this ringing true? Is this the sort of thing that you're yeah. hearing a lot of at the moment? Yeah, so um, s some people may be surprised to say that constipation is actually very common in children. Yeah. Um, and usually it's temporary. Every now and again you do get a, a, a number of children that have really significant problems with it and end up on, you know, lots of treatment or even end up in hospital because things have got so bad. And that's why I say to parents it's always good to try and nip that in the bud whenever you can. All yeah. right. So if you've got any indication that something might be going wrong, mm -hmm. to prevent it getting worse, get in there and start doing those basics. Just first of all, that's stuff that anyone can do at home, just the oh, basics, oh, oh. before you move on to mm -hmm. things like medications and things like that, if you have to. And in obviously in oh, Kane's case, it's really important wait. to do that. Mm -hmm. So is it something that, you, that they could just be prone to? They could be prone to constipation, therefore let's put X, Y and Z in place. Don't worry, we'll fill in the blanks for you. <laughs> place to prevent it happening again well that's once you've had severe constipation you're more likely to develop it again unless you're on some sort of management plan and you know what to do in which case your chances right. will obviously be reduced you can't predict which children are going to get it necessarily you can't so actually it's all about recognizing those early signs so for instance if your child is struggling to go if it's painful for them to go if they're not going 
that often or they're going less often than they used to. Mm -hmm. If they're going less often than they used to and they're happy and it's all nice and soft, well, that's fine. That's just your evolution of your normal bowel yeah. habit. Yeah. Um, but if it's becoming a distressing time for them, then you need to think, well, OK, what can I do at home? And there's lots of simple things that you can start with, definitely. So mm -hmm. things like making sure their diet's got fruit and fibre in it. Things like making sure that they're nicely hydrated so they drink enough because that will help keep the poo nice and soft. Do you like fruit? <laughs> That's a tricky thing, <laughs> And lies the issue. But it's all about you presenting do. it in different ways, OK? So you might give them fruit in different ways. You might do very decorative things with fruit, yeah. make fruit fun, make it playful. Um, getting them into a routine, just a simple routine, yeah. popping them on the toilet after breakfast mm -hmm. every morning and actually praising them when they do sit on the toilet. That's really important as well. So simple things like that you, we can all do at home yeah. or we can all start off with. Sometimes that does a trick. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of times it does a trick. But for some people, it may not be enough. OK. And, I mean, you were talking about cane going to hospital. So when you were saying about the laxative being used, I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense going to hospital. It sounds extreme to me for a child to have laxative, but actually if the constipation is bad, is that yeah. what we should be doing? Um, lots of parents worry about laxatives uh -huh. because mm. to them they're a medication, you don't yeah. want to be on it for a long period yeah. of time, you're worried about side effects, you're worried about, oh, am I going to, is my child going to get used to them and dependent on them? Actually, laxatives are very, very safe. We've got a long track record of using laxatives and we know that they can be very, very effective and they, there's no evidence that they cause significant long-term harm or side effects in the way that we use them. So okay. actually, if you're on a laxative, it's much more important to break that constipation cycle than it is to worry about, oh, am I going to be on a medicine? And actually, yeah. you may not be on a, on a, well, if you start on a high dose or go up to a high dose, you may not be on that dose all the time. Actually, as things get better, you may be able to drop mm -hmm. things back to a maintenance level. And as you were saying earlier, it's something that you need to monitor. It's a situation that in most cases isn't ongoing, but in Kane's case it was. So monitor, be aware of the things. Yeah, I would definitely monitor and, and, and write down, obviously, every time that they go into the toilet and what they're doing in the toilet and what type of stool it is that they're doing. I think it's better to be ahead and be forward. And like with the Kane's problem, I've got everything written down. I've got a file, I've got pictures. Yeah. I even have done like a secret video of him on the toilet. So then the doctors can yeah. see how he is at home. It's all right seeing them in the day and thinking that he's a perfectly... You could become a secret poo detective. Yes, I could be. They have to be quite imaginative these days. That could work, Amy. We'll talk later. <laughs> It could work. I'm it just saying you with your chart, yeah. your secret footage. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to actually be quite imaginative. You do. And, and I think yeah, there's no point people like I think with the toilet situation when they're when they're on the toilet and you're and they're in pain and they're screaming and they're crying and horrible, you, there's nothing yeah. you can do. There's also other things that you can do which help, which is like blowing bubbles, sitting on the toilet actually correctly, having a little like a little stool at the bottom so their feet are rested. Oh, not good. Hanging. So I was going to ask you about that because I'm just moving into oh, yeah. the uh, the sort of um, potty training yeah. era. Mm. <laughs> so there is a way of a child si sitting on the toilet that's yeah. correct or helpful. Yes, there is. There is an actual way that is to better sit up straight and have your feet even on like just a little step so your feet aren't hanging yeah. over on the toilet and even like with the blowing or the bubbles that helps or like me and Kane sometimes if you run out of bubbles blow tissue I'm not yeah. holding the tissue up in the air yeah. and he's blowing it or rocking backwards and forwards. and the blowing just to help them get the pushing it, yeah it just relieves obviously they're not I, I've been told that for Kane to not to push so you're not straining so with the with the blowing you're not straining you're just you're relaxing yeah. so you're relaxing your muscle so as you're blowing it's relaxing the bowel muscle to let obviously the poo come out yeah we are going to give you the website don't worry um so you can get all of this information so there's a huge amount yeah. of information and tips and help um on that note lots of you have been um sending in your questions we've lost Kane, everyone mm -hmm. it's fine it's fine darling you can have a walk around um I'm going to start with the question because we've had loads coming in. This one from Jeanette Davies. And Jeanette says, My son gets constipated quite often as I don't think he realises when he should go to the loo yet. How can I teach him when to go? Well, what I would say is um, 
get into some sort of routine. Yeah. So when we eat, naturally, our bowel or our intestines start to work. So in the morning when you have breakfast, some people do get that urge to go to the loo. Yeah. So what you want to do is kind of build that into a routine. So when breakfast is important for lots of reasons, and pooing is one of them. So after they've had breakfast, just get into the habit of encouraging them to sit on the toilet. Yeah. OK, because that will get them to recognise mm -hmm. some of those signs. Um, and being explaining to them that when you do need to go to the loo, you can say so. If you're at school, you can put your hand up and say, I need to go to the toilet. It's OK. Don't be embarrassed about it. So it's all about talking and building some of that routine in. I don't know if you had any success with Kane when you did that. Um, yeah, no, it has helped. And I think, obviously, trying to get a, uh, trying to get a child to sit on the toilet, yeah. it is quite hard. And trying yeah. to get, uh, when they, realize, when they yeah. think, oh, I don't need to go. Why are you telling me to go on the toilet? Yeah. I don't want to sit on the toilet. And, you, and that was quite hard to start off with. But now I've, sort of, I've explained it to Kane, sort of say, if you sit on the toilet, you know, you never know what's going to come out, you know? <laughs> it, and you sort of like make it into sort of like a game for yeah. them, and it has and it has helped Kane get. I mean, he was a nightmare before. I couldn't get him on the toilet. I couldn't. Yeah. And when the doctor said, "No, he's got to sit on there," I'm thinking, "I can't. He won't sit on there. I can't force him yeah. to sit on the toilet." And now he's he knows that. And he, also getting into that routine, which then yeah. allows you to say to yeah. the school, going back, yeah. look after lunch. It's really helpful if you could pop him on the toilet then. Yes, it is. You've got to have a routine. If you don't, mm. then I think it all goes. If you don't keep up with it and don't keep it into a routine and getting them onto the toilet, it doesn't work. Yeah. It, yeah. it just doesn't. And they don't even have to poo when they sit no. on the toilet. Yeah. It's just it's the just action of going to the toilet. And I, and I say to parents, remember, going to the toilet is boring. So yeah. children don't want to do it. Sometimes yeah. it's scary sitting on a big hole that's full of water and you don't yeah. know what's going to come out. Yeah. It can be a scary thing. So actually, you might have to spend time with them. You might have to do activities with mm -hmm. them. You might have to chat to them while they're on the loo. They might like the safety of you being there mm -hmm. or being around. Yeah. So just remember, it's not just about sending your child to the toilet. Yeah. Sometimes it's about spending time with them while yeah. they're there. Absolutely. Um, we've got one then from Bernie G. Thank you very much, Bernie. How can I encourage my child to stay focused on the the toilet he often loses interest and gets off before pooing so ends up holding it in later a bit like you were just saying that's yeah. it yeah it's about making it fun make and it using fun. make pooing fun talk about it have a laugh about it demystify the whole thing and do activities on the toilet with them i know it's a very unusual thing to say because that's not naturally no. where you would do yeah. Yeah. activities with your child but how can you if you if, you, if it's hard to get your child to sit down for 10 15 minutes at a table to do some activities, how can you yeah. expect them to sit on the toilet with nothing at all? Yeah. And I don't know, did you did you do I some use, of that stuff with Kane? Yeah, I, I do use, I, he has mm. a tablet, he has a D, he's got quite a few <laughs> gadgets, but he has a tablet and a DS and we, I will quite happily for him to sit up there and I'm sat next to him, like so he'll be sat uh -huh. there and he'll be talking away and then sometimes he'll say to me, I'm okay mum, I don't need you mm. and I'll just sit down on the bottom of the steps so I can sort of hear him if he's in, yeah. if he needs me or anything. But yeah, he will sit there and he's quite happy playing even if he's playing a DS or it yeah. doesn't matter or a tablet or even reading a book or anything, if that's what they're happy doing and yeah. they're happy to sit there, then that's... Oh, he's certainly tech savvy. <laughs> when he came into the studio, he was here on the plasma <laughs> trying to swipe the screen. He was amazed at our low quality technology. Why isn't it moving? <laughs> um, Bernie, I hope that helps. Uh, let's carry on then because we've got loads of questions. This one from Caroline. Uh, my son is five, has autism and suffers severe constipation, is also still in nappy. Um, any advice? See, that's a tricky one. So as we talked about earlier, some children have constipation because they've got an underlying reason for a medical reason or a behavioural reason. And we do know that in autistic children, they can develop issues with their bowels. Um, they can develop issues around eating and they can develop issues around going to the toilet, pooing and weeing. Mm -hmm. So it's a very specialist area. And usually these children are looked after by um, specialist teams in the community. There might be a paediatrician and other teams involved in that. So what I would say is there's some really good Good advice on the Eric website yeah. on ch children with autism and going to the toilet. Um, they have a link with another charity called PromoCon and they do some really, really good work, really good tips around autistic children and, to and toileting mm -hmm. them. Um, and also speak to your specialist team. Speak to the team that's looking after your child. If it goes, if they go to a special school, you might find that you know the staff in school are actually quite au fait 
with these children and toileting issues, so have yeah. a chat with them as well. Like anything and any issue with a child, every child is different, yeah. so yeah. it has to be tailored to them exactly. and their needs. You mentioned there general toileting, and I was wondering if a child does suffer from constipation, does it ever go hand in hand with other issues, perhaps with a bladder or...? Yeah, so it can do. So if you've got a medical congenital problem, the two can go together because they're in the same sort of region, so mm -hmm. you might get an issue with both of those. But secondarily, constipation can cause weaning problems as well. Yeah. Now, for an example being, if you're constipated a lot, you're more likely to get a urine infection, actually, because when you go for a wee, you may not totally empty your bladder, and therefore you've got wee that's sitting around in the bladder and that may get infected. It's much more likely in girls than boys, but we do know that association exists. And secondarily, if you're not emptying your bladder properly, you're more likely to wet yourself. Yeah. Okay, so these children might be more likely and more prone to bed wetting. So that's why it's important. Another reason why it's important to deal with the constipation, actually, because yeah. you don't want it having a secondary effect in other areas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's carry on then. Fiona Baston, thank you very much. My daughter is starting school in September and I'm worried about her going to the toilet as she is still nervous of going by herself and has accidents from holding it in too long. Should I talk to her teachers about this? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Even I know the answer to that one now. Yeah, no, she should definitely. And also, like we've said, you can do the health... There's a plan thing that you can do with the school. So you can go in and you can sit down, you can have a meeting with them, and you can sort of say the needs that her daughter needs, yeah. and you can explain that to them, and they will, they will obviously do it to her needs and yeah. what she needs. Yeah. But yeah, no, she should talk. Everyone should talk a, about it. Everyone should talk <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah. That's the message, it's, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite That's amazing. Because actually, we poo. talk about bedwetting, I think, quite openly. Yes. We talk about our children's poos from the minute they take their first breath. Yeah. Yes. So, why on earth are we so uptight about yeah. this? Or perhaps not uptight, yeah. just something that, as you said, you felt it was just you going through it. Yeah. So. And it's not. There's loads of people out yeah. there doing it. But yeah, no, definitely. She should go and speak to the school. Yeah. You've got to talk about it because if you don't, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to, it's just going to stay hidden and no one's going to know. Absolutely, absolutely. Isabel Parry, hello, thank you for your question. I worry my daughter does not go to the loo frequently enough. How many times a week should they be pooing and how can I encourage them to make sure they go enough? Well, that's the thing. It varies. It's yeah. different for different people. Your daughter may only go you know, four times a week, five times a week, and as long as she's happy, as long as it's nice and soft, as long as it doesn't hurt her and she doesn't get upset, then that's probably normal for her. They're, they're, it's, the, the normal range is actually quite grey. Some people go a lot, some people don't go very mm. often, and that may change during the course of your life. So actually, I wouldn't worry specifically about how many times she goes a week. Some people do say if you go less than four times a week, you're more likely to be constipated, but that's not a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. It's more important about how she feels and what's coming out. How can you encourage your kids to go to the toilet? Well, it's all the stuff that we've been talking about today. Get them used to it, demystify it, talk about it, get them into a routine, sort out the diet, get them drinking. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. all of those things together. That's, yeah. that, that's what will encourage them to go. It's a story. It's an ongoing story. <laughs> if any of that fails, call the poo detective. Yeah. I mean, I really feel like you're not behind this. <laughs> I feel like I'm pushing this and you're not interested. <laughs> Um, Dr. Rand, can we talk a little bit about, I think there can be an attitude out there, and correct me if you if you think this is wrong, that some people see these children as lazy, so if they have an accident or if they yeah. do soil themselves, they automatically think they're lazy because they didn't go to the, to the toilet. So how can we work on changing that attitude? Because that yeah. more than likely isn't the case, is it? So soiling is when kids accidentally pass poo into their pants and it may be a little bit, um, or it may be a lot. and. Yes, it's more likely if you've got a condition that gives you diarrhoea, that you've got runny poos and you're more likely to have an accident. Yes, it's more likely if you're on, for instance, laxatives as treatment, you may be more likely to have an accident. But people don't realise that constipation, which is hard, you know, poo that blocks things, can also cause soiling. Mm -hmm. And that's because you might have this, oh, sorry to be graphic, but you <laughs> might have this hard lump of poo sitting in the bottom waiting to come out, but yeah. it won't come out. And then new fresh poo that is more liquid escapes around the side of it. And the child might pass that without realising. Mm -hmm. Or bits of poo might break off and they pass that without realising. They may not realise because actually they've lost some of the sensation that they would normally get when they need to go to the toilet. And people may misunderstand that and perceive that as, oh, you've 
you know, you've had an accident mm. because you didn't tell me you wanted to go to yeah. the toilet. And they might misunderstand that and blame the child for mm -hmm. that. Well, actually, it's not that child's fault. They may be suffering from constipation. It may be soiling secondary to that. They may be on a laxative, which is their treatment, and it may be soiling secondary to that. I think we're not going to realise that unless we talk about it. Yeah. We're not going to realise that unless someone is speaking to the teacher. And we talked about talking to the school and the teacher about when they're going to school. Yeah. It's also important to talk to the child. Sit yeah. down with them yeah. and say, right, OK, let's get some worries you know, off yeah. your chest. Let's talk about it. And one thing I really like is going with your child, going out and being with them, and they can poo in different situations. Let's say you're out in a shopping centre, they need to go to the toilet. Go with them. Mm -hmm. They'll get used to pooing in an unusual environment. Yeah. So that's what you want to do, is get them pooing in different environments. It sounds a bit odd. But no, then they're less likely to be worried at school then, aren't they? Because, yes, it's a foreign environment, but I've been in other places before. Yeah. Um, soiling, is it ever then mistaken for other things as well? Because I think as a parent, my head would go to, oh, all of a sudden she's got diarrhoea, is she yeah. poorly now? So yeah. it's quite hard to know the difference, surely. I know. You know, because you're the poo detective. I know, yeah. Um, I sort of, yeah, no, I do know, and I think it is hard, because you do think, oh, they've had an accident, or they've, you know, and it isn't, it isn't their fault, it yeah. just happens, and unfortunately it's just something that you have to you just deal with and yeah. I think well, I always make sure that I carry extra pants in my bag or you know an extra pair of shorts or something like that for him if anything does happen then I know that I'm covered and it doesn't matter I just chuck them away it's not yeah it's not I don't think it should be made out to be a big deal that if they have soiled in their pants you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's it happens so in terms of Kane's um issues that you've had from such a young age yeah. what do you think are your top tips of coping with something like this because you clearly have coped with it brilliantly and you've really taken action um is that because of outside advice or no I think I think it's I didn't know anything about anything or what had what Kane had I didn't know anything and it wasn't until obviously I was in hospital and I'd done research and I went onto the computer and I just put in poo and it came up with the Eric website and that's how I got to know more so I went onto the Eric and I was reading other bits um, and then I found out there was other people there and I think that you've got to be ahead and also it is tiring and it is mm. exhausting and it feels like you're banging your head against the brick wall that you're not getting anywhere but eventually now I'm just starting to see the good side yeah. and we're getting there and I'm writing everything down. I have a Bristol stool chart which you can get off the Eric website yeah. yet again and obviously there's other things that you can do. Make sure they're drinking plenty of water. You know, make sure you've... I just think you need to be ahead of everything. Yeah. I just... Yeah. If you want, like with the doctors and everything, it, when you go into the doctors, they'll say to you, write everything down. And if you're going and you're already writing that down, you can say, well, look, I've actually done that. I've written it yeah. down before you even asked me to. And then yeah. it's sort of you're ahead of of what's going to happen yeah. next. So, yeah. And in terms of growing out of being someone who's constipated, yeah. is that likely? Well, if it's mild and temporary, yes, you are possibly going to grow out of it because you learn to manage your own bowel habit. But if, it, if you've got major problems or it's severe, you're very unlikely to grow out of it with, without help. Yeah. And that's why getting help and getting the yeah. right treatment is important because you're more likely to develop constipation later. And we do get adults, we do see adults that have had problems secondary to long-term constipation. Mm. But that's the reason why we say talk about it, because recognising those early signs and knowing what to do and preventing things getting out of hand is so important. And, you know, you can have a big effect just by yourself at home. You don't always need, you know, lots and lots of treatment to do it. Yeah. Um, let's do top tips from you, please. So I, I always iterate the basics over and over yeah. again because it's, it's all about doing those well. So it's about talking about it in the first place, demystifying the whole thing. Let's not be embarrassed if anything you know, untoward happens. Get them into that routine, that daily routine. Um, you might have to occupy them while they're on there, but it's all about putting them on the toilet after breakfast. It's about making sure that their diet is good, nice balance of fruit and fibre in there making sure that they're well hydrated, making sure that they're nice and active because that gets things moving around. Yeah. Um, and then if things really aren't going to plan, you can always ask for help. And you may need to go on to medicines and there's a whole range of different medicines. Um, and when things get really, really bad, there are other treatments available. But I, as a parent, I wouldn't be scared of those treatments. Mm -hmm. Some, these problems take a long time to develop. 
they take a long time to sort out. So just be aware that that is part of the natural process. It can take a long time for these things to sort out. And Amy, any parents watching now or anyone who's caring for a child watching now and they are worried or concerned, what would be their first step in your opinion? I would say actually get onto the Eric website and yeah. get on there and there is people there there's a number that you can ring and you can speak to those people on there and I think that it's, it's great that you can do that and I think that's the best thing that you can do is to get onto the Eric yeah. website and just speak to someone or even just read some of the comments that other people have put because there's a parents bit that you can go on and just do that and yeah okay brilliant thank you very That's much right. thank you so much to both of you we are sadly out of time though my thanks to dr round and amy and kane wherever he yes. is and we should say this little fella <laughs> who came brought him with him and gave him a little name but has now just left him here so i just wanted you to see him as well uh thank you so much to all of you once again um the website for more information is let's talk about poo dot eric dot org dot uk that's let's talk about poo dot eric dot org dot uk where you can also access various leaflets and lots and lots of tips and advice um, for you to help your child thanks again for watching i'll see you soon goodbye <laughs>